Thank you so much, uh, Shelley, and thank you for that uh, introduction. Of course, I come from a city of protest, and if anybody wants to know where I learnt my 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 protest from, it is of course uh, Leicester. We are the city of protest, and it's a pleasure to join you all uh, today. Um, I would I would of course like to start by thanking Stop the War not only for organising today's important event, but also for all the work. Uh, they do in service of peace and global justice. So I'm here today in full solidarity with everyone, of course, not only on the call today, but around the world who is protesting against the oppression of Palestine. And I stand with the Palestinian people, of course, in their struggle uh, for peace and justice. We, all of us, have borne witness to hundreds killed in Israeli airstrikes on Gaza, including many, many children whose innocence actually reveals the horror and trauma of this uh, massacre. The latest massacre has displaced tens of thousands of Palestinians from their homes and destroyed electricity, water and hygiene, every possible infrastructure you can think of uh, to necessitate our basic needs. The sites targeted include hospitals, office blocks containing media organizations like Al Jazeera and the Associated Press uh, uh, in Gaza and the largest residential building in Gaza as well. The ceasefire announced brings no end to the torment and torture, of course, and no justice uh, for the uh, decades of marginalization, elimination and suffering of the Palestinian people. The sy systemic violence against Palestinians and the illegal uh, Israeli occupation is an international atrocity and was found by a recent Human Rights Watch report to amount to effectively an apartheid uh, state uh, regime. Uh, the short-term set of causes for this latest violence, uh, latest violent event include internal power struggles within Israel and the eviction of Palestinian residents from Sheikh Jarrah. Yet we know the long-term context, which is systematically underreported in media accounts of, uh, of this, it lays bare the historical oppression of the Palestinian people. The recent violations are part of an ongoing process of the Nakba that started in 1948, where as we know, over, over 750,000 Palestinians were forced out of their homes and instantly made refugees. Since occupying the West Bank and Gaza in 1967, Israel has unilaterally declared tens of thousands of hectares of state land for Israel, Israel, Israeli settlements, a process that is illegal under international laws of war and occupation. 2020 saw the highest rate of settlement expansion in East Jerusalem on record, and over 1,500 uh, Palestinians are under threat of their homes being demolished and forcibly displaced. The Gaza Strip, as we know, is effectively an open air prison, with 97% of the population not having access to clean water. And with each Israeli bombing campaign, further eroding living standards. Israeli settlements in the occupied Palestinian territories have been identified by the United Nations as being in breach of international law. The UN Secretary General and the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights have called on the Israeli government to abandon the illegal annexation plans. The international community must, of course, recognize uh, the Palestinian state, stand up for the inalienable human rights of Palestinians and actively support the enforcement of international law. This is a colonial war. Without doubt, it's a colonial war. The UK is historically 
and contemporarily complicit in this suffering. You know, as Bernard Reagan argues in his book on the Balfour Declaration, the British Empire was instrumental in the displacement and subjugation of Palestinian people. Patrick Wolfe, the preeminent scholar of settler colonialism, classifies the relationship between Israel and Palestine as part of occupier and occupied. Understanding this asymmetrical power imbalance is essential in moving towards a future of peace. We cannot ignore the enduring legacy of the British Empire, which carved up the region and left the legacy of instability that persists to this day. Britain still believes it can act with impunity in a region from which they have violently extracted an obscene amount of resources over the centuries. So fast forward to, to today, and you'll understand this. With all that is said by the international community, the UK government is still licensing arms. What will it take? What will it take for the UK to stop? The UK government has licensed at least 361 million worth of arms sale to Israel since 2014. The campaign against arms trade reported that it is likely that UK made arms have been used against Palestinians. And I have urged the government to end all sales of weapons that could be used unlawfully against Palestinian people. Across the British media landscape, this crisis is routinely re reported as a conflict between equals. Rather than retaliations to the military actions of a settler colonial state, this historical context is frequently ignored in favor of a narrative that focuses on Palestinian aggression against Israel. So the UK press either fails to report on atrocities against the Palestinian people or else it continues to label these abuses as clashes and consistently misrepresents the systemic aggression and violence directed at Palestinians. You see, such framing serves only to legitimize and obscure the scale of oppression in occupied Palestine. This framing is reflected uh, by the British government who neglect to recognize both the suffering of the Palestinian people and the UK's complicity in this. The statements uh, from the White House have been equally weak. President Biden failed to condemn blatant Israeli violations of international law. Not only that, but his administration signed off on $735 million of additional military arms sales to Israel on the 17th of May this year. At the very same time that bombs were raining down on Palestinian houses. That is in addition to the $3.8 billion in military aid that America provides Israel each year. Yet President Biden believes this is, this is good value for money. As he has previously said, that if there weren't an Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interests in the region. America's indiscriminate use of the veto on the UN Security Council in matters relating to Israel is a major barrier to peace, as it was reported that the US blockade ceasefire resolutions three times uh, during the latest uh, bombardment. I've, I take some hope in the fact that there are now a handful of brave women of color, members of Congress, who oppose Israel's illegal occupation and war crimes, including, of course, Rashida Taleb, the first uh, woman of Palestinian descent in Congress. Yet the international community must do much more to end the violations of international law, recognize the state of Palestine, and lay the foundations for a future of peace and justice. It must and can be possible 
for Israelis and Palestinians to live in peace, for Palestine to be free. International solidarity is vital in this struggle. And I am proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with everyone here and everyone in the UK and around the world who is committed to ending the historical marginalization of the Palestinian people. And as the voices of protest around the world say, up and down the UK and across the world, in major cities, towns, and everywhere, the mobilization has been real. The solidarity has been strong. And as they say, free, free Palestine. Thank you. Thank, Thank you.